welcome to EasyClear, your one-stop software solution. Our goal is to uniform the supply chain along all modalities into one platform. This is inclusive of Transnet, Customs Services and IATA, along with cross-border and transit into upper African countries. We offer system as a service that allow easy-to-use transitions between the forwarding, RCG, clearance, invoicing with disbursements, reporting and bulk interactions. Follow me into the agent industry with your host, Devin Few. Shall we get started for the forwarding module? So we'll get your browser to remember the first screen, username and password. Once you log in, then this will be your company login information. Your browser will remember the very first screen. So the next screen, you'll just have to select your company name. Furthermore to that, your department. You can set it up for mul multiple departments as well. So I'm going to close these other tabs. Alrighty. And then obviously selecting your name and your personal password. If you do forget your password, uh, then you're more than welcome to reach out to EasyClear uh, or your local administrative user where they can reset the password for you. If you tell the browser at this point to remember the password and you click on the update password, um, the browser might forget the first login details. So just remember not to run with that. That's once I'm logged into EasyClear, the very first thing you'll see is the landing page. And you also see that the browser is asking you to remember or update the password. Each browser might look a little bit different. So at the moment, I'm working on Opera, but the environment for EasyClear is exactly the same. All right. Uh, for here, I'm going to start off with the forwarding file. Cool. So you'll click on forwarding and forwarding. Now, the reason, main purpose of forwarding is to um, review your agent files. Uh, so if you have an overseas agent delivering to the South African agent, uh, that is what we utilize the forwarding for, inclusive of air freight and sea freight. So I'll click on the forwarding and most commonly for imports. The very first screen allows you to click on the home screen. So it will take you back home. Add file will create a new forwarding file. Copy file will allow you to generate a new uh, forwarding file where those of you who do not have auto numbering set up in the EasyClear system to which you can reach out to EasyClear and we can set it up for you or at least show you how that works. Uh, so if you do copy a file, it will utilize the next file number in sequence for that month, depending on how your forwarding uh, auto numbering is set up. And if you do not have auto numbering, it will ask you to please specify the next file number. If the file number already exists, it will tell you there's a duplicate file and ask you to reinsert the correct file number. From there, you also have the search functionality. On the search functionality, the very first item here is the drop down to say, how many records would you like to display on screen? What are you searching by? If you just specify file number, bill of entry number, all the way through to the manifest number or transport document numbers. Uh, we also have the advanced search. So if you would like to search for any third party references, such as the container details on the forwarding files, you can also utilize the advanced search functionality there. If I do not type anything into the search criteria or the search box underneath file number and I press search straight away, it's almost as if the program is just putting in a percentage automatically for you at the end and end in search. If I remove that percentage and just press search, you'll see the same results do come up. Or say, for instance, I've registered a file and I would like to look for this file number here, but there's so many file numbers that are very similar to that. So if I know potentially what the file number is, I can write SUD, replace any of the other characters with a percentage symbol, and then just write 678 at the end, and I'm expecting only one result. When there is only one result on the search screen, the file will automatically open to the forwarding file itself. So ideally notes, I can replace any characters within a file number or any of the um, searches with the magnifying glass next to it with a percentage just to run an easier method to search. At the same time, while saying that, if I had to type in SUD and press uh, search, that will be the first beginning character. So I can press percentage and then right at the end automatically there's a percentage without needing to type it. 
So I can see the same file number comes up because there's only one file number with UD in it. If there are multiple results, then obviously you'll need to just run your selection as to which forwarding file you're selecting. All right, so we're just going to start from scratch and add a brand new forwarding file. Upon adding a new file, you'll see some options on the left hand side. Now, you don't want to try and save the file or run with any of the options until you have inserted the mandatory fields. If at this point you haven't raised any information on the forwarding file and you press save already off the bat, it's going to tell you what are the mandatory fields before you allow to press save. So for those of you who, would, who don't have all the information available, you'd like to insert some of the information and just press save for a placeholder until you can contact your overseas agent to send you the ANF documents or the master bill lading document that confirms the uh, book shipment then you can at least continue with the forwarding file at a later stage. But please remember to take notes of that file number. All right, so we can see here that the overseas agent would be mandatory and the consignee mandatory. If I have to highlight in one of those boxes and try and ignore it, a mandatory field in EasyClear that cannot be ignored, you'll see once you press the ignore button, it doesn't change to the word ignored. So the file will physically not save unless those mandatory fields are inserted. All right, just to show you uh, incomplete or incorrect information once you press save. So then we'd have to go through here. Uh, for auto numbering, I'm just going to leave the file numbering blank just to see if there's auto numbering being set up for forwarding. If it doesn't pull through automatically, we'll end up typing our own file number in. Right. I'll press tab just to go to the next field. Please try and avoid using enter as much as possible. Not unless you're in a free format text box, which is one of those big boxes where you can press enter just to reach the next line of the free format text box, towards which I'll show you later in marks and numbers. All right, for the transfer mode here, most commonly it would be one for sea freight, maritime transport, or four for air freight transport. You're more than welcome to use the forwarding module for rail and road if you want to, but we do prefer that to be in the manifest screen as you're going to need to submit the EDR message on that anywho. The forwarding module does not have an EDR process, which is why we link the new cargo reporting on the far left hand side. So if you have a ANF or a master bill lading document for air or, or sea freight, once the forwarding file is captured, you can copy that information through to your RCG reporting just by pressing this button here. It will take you to the RCG where you can complete and submit your RCG for the next session. All right. For this one here, I'm going to start off with a C freight type entry. So I've chosen transfer mode one. I can just press one on my keyboard there or select from the drop down and press tab. If I had at this point made a mistake, and I can always hold in shift and press tab just once. And on any web page, whether you're on internet banking or EasyClear, uh, shift tab will, will take you back to the previous field on any browser. All right, so to go forward, I'm just going to use the tab function. And please remember to use capital letters within EasyClear as customs do prefer those type of printouts. They're easier to read. For C freight, we got container load. So we can specify FCL or LCL. I'm going to jump back just slightly here and specify air freight. If I do utilize air freight, I see container load is still an option. So it's just best to ignore that if your modality is air. All right, let's just go back to C freight. So I'm going to use an FCL type shipment. Mm, let's actually use a LCL type shipment rather. All right, the overseas agent. So if your overseas agent is registered in the system, you can look up the agent name. If I just press the magnifying glass straight away, I can see what agents are registered in the system. If I already know the overseas agent name, like Harry overseas agent, I can just start typing in Harry Preston tab. And if there's any. Uh, power went off completely and if I just refresh my EasyClear screen you can at least see a lost internet connection. I've joined a completely different router now and I'm still logged onto the EasyClear application.
All right. So now we can continue with uh, adding a file. And then I'm just going to carry on with uh, recording the session again. Cool. I see recording is continuing there, so we can proceed. All right. So we're running with the maritime shipment. Uh, full con uh, less container load, so I'll press L on my keyboard. I could use my mouse and hit the drop down to run a selection, but I find that any drop down on the internet browser, uh, first character is F, second character is an L for Lima, or less container load. So I can either press F for L on my keyboard, and you'll see it changes between the two. From there, we're on overseas agents, and I was trying to depict that if an overseas agent doesn't exist in the system, and you can't find it on the select scenario. So I'm going to say tests over C's uh, agent 101. I removed the last character there just to press tab to see if the final uh, letter or name of the overseas agent does pull through. I can see in this case it does not. So at this point, I can press the one here to complete the name or alternatively press the plus button as I'm registering a forward fi uh, forwarding file. You will take notes on the top selection, even part of the drop down. You don't need to touch anything there. Our system intelligence already marks us off as an overseas agent as you tick the plus button next to the overseas agent box. So we'll just go here and complete the name. As speculated in previous sessions as well, once you press save, please take note with an easy clear you cannot change the name of any client once it is saved. So just make certain the name is correct. If it is invalid, please delete it and retry again before you start using it on a file. The moment you note that you use a client name on a given file that's released by customs or the forwarding file, try not delete any clients, rather put them on data hold or customs hold so that nobody else uses their clients if you want the client on hold. But it does allow you to print specific reports in the back end that pull clients information. So it's always best not to put a, a delete a client if you know that you have not, uh, if you have used it. But if you haven't used it, then by all means proceed with the deletion and recreation of the correct name. So I'm just going to put in the uh, tests address. And like stipulated before, this, this address is a free format text box. So tab will take me to the next field. However, in text box like this, enter will take me to the next line. So that's the only portion where enter will work. Uh, so I'll specify line address two, and then whatever the postal code is, or furthermore to that, the suburb, depends how much information your clients want to see on the printouts. This information can be done on printed out onto your ANF type documents or for C freights, your master bill lading. If you need to reprint it from the system, then it'll print in the order as you type it. All right, then we can press the save button. If I do press the blue button, it will man automatically save the client name as is. So this is as good as pressing the save button as well. So I'm just gonna press the save button now and then press the bl uh, blue button thereafter. And you'll see the blue button has to now open up a secondary tab straight into client maintenance. There's no back screen on the client maintenance screen. So when you are done with it, please remember to close it in order to go back to your first tab or just click on the first tab. But it is preferable that you do close it. If you have multiple tabs of EasyClear open, it is quite nice to right click on the first tab on Google Chrome, Firefox or Opera. Then you can right click and say close tabs to the right or just close other tabs. Um, just making certain that you don't have too many tabs open to not confuse yourself. Where are you working? All right. So the client maintenance, I can see it is marked off as an overseas agent. Furthermore to that, I can see what other information I can add here. Uh, the warehouse type is just a stock standard to specify what warehouse type. So that will always be there, but we're adding an overseas agent so we can ignore that field. I can add the overseas agent customs code, uh, their VAT number, their company registration number. If I know I'm going to be invoicing them directly, their account number, if their fan number, if it's an unregistered trader or ID number. Furthermore to that, I can also double check what are their contact details on the left hand side. So if you want to insert their contact details and use it for any automation within EasyClear, you can always utilize the auto email addresses as well. Uh, if you have delivery notes to print out from the forwarding file, you can also utilize the delivery address. 
LC details, if you also want to have an alternative address to print out for the LC contact details. Data details can have its own address, so you might be invoicing a PO box, for instance, uh, instead of their physical address, or the sister company from a mother-daughter sister company relationship. Uh, data profiles will not work with an overseas agent, that's more for your importer or exporter, but you can, if you mark it off as a debtor, it will come up from the invoicing side if it is ticked as an invoice uh, debtor. Permit control. Um, so we will have a session to go right through client maintenance as well. And then defaults, you can set up further defaults from there, but you'll note that there is no common defaults for the overseas agent itself. All right, so I'm just showing you in relation to that. I'm just going to close the screen here. Cool. Overseas agents is the agent that's sending it from the overseas. And then you get your consignee. Who's the consignee who's receiving it? The agents within the South African portion. So I'm just going to say my South African agent. Most commonly represented as your company name. Now I know this one doesn't exist, so I remove the T at the end. See, it doesn't auto populate. And I'll press the plus button. And now I can see client type, so I don't need to adjust the client type at all. Scroll further down, I'll complete the name and then just put in the test South African agent, uh, Johannesburg 1601 postal code. If need be, you don't have to put in a postal code. Depends what you want to see on your printout. Pressing the save button, I can see it's automatically saved in the system. If you are uncertain if you press the save button or not, it's always best to just remove the last couple of characters of the name, press tab again, and you can see it auto completes that name for you, confirming it is saved in the system. Alrighty, port of loading. So we're going to go from a China scenario from, let's say, Shanghai. Now, if I don't feel like typing out the whole name, if I just type in SHAN, I can see that there's multiple results. But if I type in SHANGH, I see that ultimately I'm going to get two results here. So for Shanghai, I'm still going to have to run with the selection to choose which one I'm going through. So if I type in SANG, it lowers my search results on the far right hand side just to see which one I am selecting. If you find that you don't utilize the other one or you don't want in the system, more than welcome to reach out to EasyClear as we can show you how to remove certain uh, cities from the system if you're never utilizing them, just to make the search criteria and the process a bit smoother. But it's always good to have all cities, so um, just double check on that and double check with your management team if you'd like to remove any cities from the system. Then we can reach out to EasyClear and just assist you there as well. All right, so I'm going to specify the Shanghai port. The port of discharge, this is going to be discharge in Durban. And then final destination, I can specify city deep uh, for the container depot 18 or 17, I believe. Uh, so port of discharge might be Durban, but the final destination is going to be Johannesburg. Alternatively, if it's not coming to Johannesburg, I can also specify Durban as well. Then as I speculated earlier, we do have new cargo reporting file. So this is why we allow you to specify what is the RCG message type on the screen. So when it goes over to cargo reporting, it will already have that information across. At this moment, if you're doing air freight as an agent and you do not own the airplane, please make certain it's house airway will. Specific to sea freight, sea freight is a two-step scenario. Uh, if you don't own the vessel, you're going to be submitting the house. And if you're raising a forwarding file, you should technically have a house shipment. If it's a straight shipment, RCG is not really mandatory. So I don't believe you would be raising a forwarding file. You'd probably be raising a straight shipment in the clearance department. For sea freight imports, I'm going to be marking this off as ALH, as that'll be the advanced loading house. That's almost like the pre-alert for the master bill of lading documents say these goods are being loaded onto the vessel. And then whilst the vessel's en route, next you would submit your RCG for the container house thereafter. Other companies uh, do to the ECL list, the empty container list, and the break bulk um, cargo as well. But I don't believe you'd be raising a forwarding file for an empty container list, more commonly for a break bulk file. 
Right, so for this one, I'm just going to make my selection LH, as I know that's going to be my first submission to SARS. When I do do my RCG file for the next session, not this session, please, uh, then we can just press tab, and that is just prepping it for the RCG file. Estimated arrival date and time. As per the master belating, when is this information coming through? If I don't have that information on hand, as mentioned earlier, if I press save at this point, I can see my forwarding file is now saved. So I can leave this as a placeholder, wait a day or two for the overseas agent to come back to me, carry on with other work, and then I can press search, jotted my file number down for auto numbering, opening the file in question, and once I receive the master belating, I can go ahead and proceed with the rest. If I have a PDF copy of the master belating document or any emails or documentation thereof that correspond to the shipment, I can use the paperclip here uh, just to archive that information into the EasyClear system so that you don't have to go through the manual paper trail if you need to pull up that documentation at a later stage. The paperclip requires the fact that a file number exists because if the file isn't saved, the paperclip will not appear there so the paperclip doesn't know where your attachments are being saved to. So please, when you are trying to add files, make sure it's in the file is saved first. I'm just going to show you a, a short example of this. So if you have an email accordingly and you'd like to drag an email across, uh, then your best bet will actually be uh, to pull that into a documents folder on your computer from your email. And from there, you can drag and drop it into EasyClear. The type of documents we're not too concerned about, uh, as long as it's a correct name that the Windows can understand, then EasyClear system will understand it as well. Once you've got your document uploaded into the system, then you can verify what type of document is this. If under the drop down list you know the document type does not exist, then you're more than welcome to press the plus button and add a document type just in case you want to correspond your documents to a specific package type. I'm going to specify this document here as other and then click on upload. Once it's uploaded, the screen will disappear. If you'd like to review it, you can click on the paper clip and then view attachments. Or alternatively, even from the clearance side, you can also click on the three dots on top. Go to the easy filing down below. It will open a new tab on top. And then that will give you the ability to download the document. So the blue one item here will download the document. Administrative users only will see the red button where you can delete the document. So please don't upload your personal information accidentally to a file. Otherwise, you'll have to go to your administrative user just to delete that attachment linked to the file. And if you would like to understand what client pack is, uh, please reach out to us as that's a very unique integration between you and your clients. But it is a billable scenario if you're using the client pack. All right. For the client pack, basically your clients also have access to EasyClear and then you can control their username and password so that they can see the documents you are sharing with them. It's a very finite process, so that's why I recommend rather reach out to us if you'd like to know more about that. All right. From here, as I say, I can download the documents or furthermore delete the documents and then it's no longer available. Now see, I have already downloaded the documents to my computer. All right, so I'm just going to close the attachments portion and work further on the forwarding file. Next field in question will be the estimated, estimated arrival date time. The time is not absolutely necessary at this point, but it's always good to insert it here. So it pulls over to the RCG as customs transgression lists for RCG are measuring the timestamps as well. When I do the RCG session, I'll just take you through the SARS website where you can find those timestamps as there's very specific times as to when you have to report before you've reported too late and custom sees the transgression. Most of you should be aware of this. If not, please do let me know so we can also set your cam on it and take you through the process as well. All right, let's put in the estimated day and time arrivals. We're going to specify 2022, September the 25th. Uh, what time is that coming through? I don't know at this point. Sea freights can be delayed by anything between a tsunami, hurricanes, or even delays at the Durban depot. Uh, the shipment date, when is it going to be, be leaving the overseas? So I'm going to specify that's going to be leaving today's date. 
and then what will the ship name be? Now the ship name, if it's not in the system, you're more than welcome to manually type it in here and save it. The main reason why it won't be in the system is the magnifying glass here is what we link to the SARS mass tables. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to open it quickly, SARS mass tables. So if you do open this website over here called tools.sars.gov.za forward slash ACM code tables, you'll see everybody who is registered with customs uh, per modality, you can actually identify have they been registered as a vessel agent. Uh, so if Transnets haven't given the ID 100 over to customs, or oh, sorry, the vessel agent giving the ID 100 to Transnet, who registered the same with customs. If that process hasn't happened, then more than likely the vessel name will not be in the system, especially if it's a new vessel that generally doesn't take that routing. For air freight shipments, you generally find that most airlines, or actually all airlines, are, have to be registered with IATA, so they really shouldn't be that problem, but you're using the master airwayable number anywho. Okay, cool. So if you know you are registered or you want to double check if they're registered or not, you can utilize this functionality here and just go through the tables. Clicking on each one will download it to Excel. If that website is down for any reason, our search functionality in EasyClear won't bring up results because we rely on the SARS website to be functional for that to search. But as speculated earlier, uh, Ilona MSC uh, RTD. So if that vessel name isn't registered in the system, I'll see that no search results come up. But EasyClear does still allow you to put in the vessel name, press this, uh, the save button, and it will save a free format text box anywho. All right, I'm going to search for a vessel that is available. I see once you actually press tab, you have to press the magnifying glass. That's how we allow people to get around if it doesn't exist in the system. So I'm going to specify MSC loaner, and I can see the master carrier code here will be MSC. So by selection of MSC, it's by default inserted the ship carrier code, the vessel radio call sign, and the master carrier code. If there's a voyage number, 014 whiskey, that should come from your master bill lading. But if you have the master bill lading number, technically you should be able to Google it as well and also identify what the voyage number is from there as well. Um, more like the vessel radio call sign, sorry, not the voyage number, that's generally not on Google. Okay, so if we have the master number, I'm going to have the MSC and the rest of the number there. Now, MSC have been finicky lately as they've changed their documents last year. So quite often the time, the master number um, for MSC, they're asking to reflect MSC, MSC, and then the rest of the master bill lading number. So just double check with your vessel agent as to how they want to see the uh, master bill lading number, just so that they don't delay your release of the shipment of goods when you're doing the clearance file. All right, so I'm going to just uh, reference this one as MBL001 as my master bill lading number. The cargo carrier code. Now, the cargo carrier code would generally be the agent's responsibility as who's responsible for the goods in the container or on the vessel itself if anything were to happen. At this point, you'd specify the agent who's responsible here. Uh, so I'm just going to randomly choose any agent representing myself as the agent. So I'm just going to say Global Maritime Solutions is the agent there. Okay. Now, generally, that would be my customs code um, as I am registering the file as the forwarder. The submaster, I see there's a massive blank space in there, so I'm just going to remove that. Strange why it's saved into a blank space, so there really shouldn't be any blank spaces there. I'll validate that as well. If there is a submaster, please do remember to insert it, and you would have to register the submaster with RCG Customs as well. Number of pieces, I'm going to specify 10. So for five house lines, for instance, each house line um, has two pieces on it. That would give me my 10 total units. So the top section of the forwarding file is known as the master, what is the consolidation of all the house lines. The gross weight, I'm just going to mark this off as 500. And then your volumetric weights, not mandatory for C, uh, air freight, but definitely mandatory for sea freight. 
the system does allow you to save without putting in the volume. So you'll note that you can leave that blank, but it's always best to maybe insert the volume. So I'm going to just specify that as 32 cubes. All right, then the shipped on board date. Um, the shipment date versus the shipped on board date. Shipment date is normally maybe potentially the document date, where the shipped on board date is when is the vessel actually leaving from the overseas um, dock. So I'm going to specify 2022-09-20. I received the documents today, I'm doing the documents today, but I know this vessel is leaving today as well, or potentially it could be leaving tomorrow. Right, the direction, is this an import or an export type file? So you can have forwarding for exports if you would like, but most commonly it's utilized for the import scenarios. If once I'm done at that point, the rest of the information here is not mandatory, until you reach the call purpose, then I'd rather just specify, I'm not loading the cargo to go out of South Africa, I'm waiting for the cargo to get into South Africa, and then I'm gonna unload it off the vessel. So the okay. aspect, whether you're taking it off the aircraft or the boat to bring it in the country, or you're loading it onto a, um, transport in order to take it out the country. That's the difference between the loading versus the unloading. The information in between that, if the customer uh, order number would like to be inserted there, they want to represent the purchase order number or their physical order number for the declaration, you can reference that here as well. And that'll be ready for the clearance file inclusive. So I'll show you how to raise a clearance file using own clearance and stop at that point for the import clearance scenarios. All right, so customs order number, I'm just going to say order 001. Transaction date time. Transaction date time is if there is a physical financial transaction and you want to reflect the payment between the supplier and the uh, re recipient party, being your importer, you can capture that information now. 99% uh, of our clients do not. If there's a transshipment port, uh, like for instance, um, Port Elizabeth obviously has been renamed, has those two transshipment ports, so it can be docked at the one and then loaded at the other, that will be your transshipment port. That can be specified there. What is the value of the payments or the value of the goods if you want to reutilize that field for other purposes? And then the payment date as to uh, if it's a 30-day account, so obviously they're going to be paying within 30 days, depends on their uh, invoice terms. And once I've reached the call purpose, the last item here is I'm going to press tab and it will take me back to the top of the screen. I'm not going to start framing the house details without saving the top of the screen. Now you'll notice if you're registering a file and you didn't press save, this plus save and delete button wouldn't be available here. So EasyClear works in two factors. You've got to save your details for the master before you start working on the house level. Otherwise, if you start working on the house level and you press save here, the other information you wrote out as the master will not be available as you did not press the save button on top. Alrighty. So now that we've completed the master, you can utilize the printouts to maybe print file covers or whatnot. I will take you through that. I just want to capture one or two house lines, one being a handover and one being an own clearance and what is the difference between the two. So I'll press the plus button here first. So it's plus, save, and delete. We also have the link tracking for purchase order management system. So those of you who would like to utilize the purchase order management system, allowing your overseas agents or your clients to use the EasyClear system to make bookings, we can definitely take you through that. It is quite a process, so please reach out to us as that'll be a billable scenario, and we train on that one independently. So it is an available option, but the basic standards are per your EasyClip package as is. The way you can just press the plus button and start writing your house information. So the first one I'm going to choose is a handover or, or own clearance. I'm going to specify handover. Now, what is a handover shipment? A handover shipment is when another clearing agent in South Africa has already done the bill of entry submission to customs on the clearance level, but have handed over the declaration for you to do the transport um, as you're going to be picking up other boxes that are related to the same container and you can obviously bill for the work done there. 
for handover shipments, you can invoice handover shipments directly. But for own clearance shipments, it's always best to um, invoice the clearance file directly there. All right, the handover shipments. What is the freight? Is it prepaid or collect? So it's either prepaid or I'm going to be pay making the payment on collect. What is the house bill number? Now I'm going to make the house bill number HBL001 and then the house file number, which is not mandatory, but it's nice to have there because when it goes over to RCG, it's also inclusive on the RCG message to customs. So leaving that blank would actually affect you later. So let's actually rather fill it in. So the one I've made HBL001 and the other one I've made HBL1001, just to show you the difference when you are adding an own clearance file. And then the other one I'm going to be making HBL002. So I can show you during own clearance as to what search criteria you would use to pull this into the clearance side. But obviously for a handover shipment, that won't be the fact. That'll be for line number two. The supplier, I can add a supplier in the system and then it imports it, but I'm just going to be selecting one. So if I press S on my keyboard, I know who the overseas agent is, I know who my supplier is going to be, and then I can specify which supplier it is. The supplier, if I press the plus button now, I can already just double check it. Uh, I can see the name and what the full address is. When you are adding address lines into the system, please avoid using any colons, plus, or an apostrophe. Those three main characters, if they are part of your address line and it goes to the clearance file or it goes over to the RCG file, customs will reject it with an error in message saying that those items there are invalid characters. So if I press save, I can see that the forwarding screen does include the saves, but the clearance file actually strips those characters out and we're trying to get rid of more invalid characters as we go along. You'll see there's commas, semicolons, uh, quote, uh, uh, quotation marks are okay, the dashes are okay, so all of the symbols seem to be perfect with customs, even the and symbol, but rather keep it to the stock standard English. Right, so I'll just press save there. For the importer, I'm just going to register a new importer. So I'll just call this importer for my FWD001. Remove the one to make certain it's not already in the system. Press the plus button and I can save it at this point. At this moment in time, I might not have the full imports information, so you might want to insert temporary information at the time and then populate it later before you send it over to customs. All right. So I can press the save button over here and you'll see on a forwarding file, it did not validate the importer's customs code. And that's because we do allow you to bypass that at this point, just to make certain that if you don't have that information, you can come back and populate it later. But for a clearance file, uh, you will not be able to save the registration screen if the customs code is not valid or at least run the customs worksheet. So I'm just going to specify an unregistered trade at this point and a tax ID uh, number. So txt ID 1001 and save. Oops, so my import has been saved. This item here for handover agents would be mandatory due to the fact that this is a handover shipment. But at this point, if I do press the save option, you will note that my house line has now been saved. As I can see the save on the top right hand corner without needing to fill out absolutely all the mandatory fields. If you would like to, all these fields absolutely mandatory before a user does save the information, we can switch on the validations that forces users to populate the mandatory fields that you specify. And if they're not built into the system, I'm pretty certain we can make it available to say that only certain fields might be mandatory per your business requirements. All right, so for this one, the handover for the overseas agent, I'm just going to specify the overseas agent that is ready in the system. See, I've actually got to use, there might not be one registered for O. Oh, I see there's three overseas agents registered in the system, so I'm going to use Imperial Logistics. Is there a notify party? So more than likely your handover agent might be the notify party or your collection party as well might be the notify party itself. Who's the debtor? The port of discharge. Now, in regards to the house line, I understand the terminology might be a little bit confusing. 
For a house loan, port of discharge is where is it leaving from? But for any clearance file, a port of discharge is where is its final destination, where you're taking it off the truck or off the vessel as well. But for this one, port of discharge, it is coming from Shanghai. And then place of delivery will be Durban. Right. So I know the terminology might be a little bit confusing, but that's where we go through multiple training sessions just to show you where is it coming from and where is it going to. So that's the line of order of things as to how you always need to undertake this part of the information. Number of pieces. Um, I'm just going to be capturing mm -hmm. ultimately two lines here. So I'm going to specify the first one's five and then my next one will be five as well. The gross weight will be 50. And then per my cubes, if I take the cubes divided in half, I see that'll just be 16. All right, then for the unpacked depot and the discharge terminal. As I say, if I say this one's going to be delivered to um, Johannesburg City Deep, I might use discharge terminal 17, but my unpacked depot might have been ZACPAC 08 or 07 based on my deconsolidation terminal. If you do not know what the deconsolidation terminal is for the unpacked depot and you only have the discharge terminal, most commonly people just make it the same. But it is best to always say, OK, cool, my unpacked depot might be 07 because I phoned my vessel agents. They confirmed that information. Uh, that'll be the SACD Durban. And then my discharge terminal will be 084 Durban Container Terminal Pier 2. Or alternatively, if it is coming to Johannesburg, uh, then you can say, cool, what city deep Johannesburg for 17 is it coming through to? So I'm just using random depots. And as you can see, when you select the depot name or the depot code, the depot name does come up. If you know the depot name, but you don't know the depot code, for instance, we do have the functionality that if you leave a blank, you can just press the search function, all the depot names do pop up on the right hand side and you can see you can actually scroll through it directly. Now scrolling through this trying to read through absolutely everything is in depot code order name so it might be difficult to find which one you're looking for. So quite personally I like to press control F on my keyboard and for any browser that'll bring up your search and find scenario. If you're in Wikipedia that will also work as well. Over here I want to specify um, all the depots that belong to Johannesburg. And I can see there's one of 33 results for U4, and then I can just press the enter or the right arrow there, and I can just go through all the depots that actually specify the word Johannesburg and clarify which one I am using. All right, but yeah, if you don't know the depot name or you don't know the depot code, it's not something that anybody else can help you with other than the vessel agent as they're the ones knowing where they're going to offload your box or container to. So please validate that with your vessel agent as well. And hopefully crossing fingers, it would be on your master belating document, but sometimes that is not. Right. More to that, you can also specify independently. So if you have a gross invoice for the forwarding file, you can specify that on top. Alternatively, if you've got specific invoices and UCR numbers, subhouse of lading details, expiry, location of goods, these information, most majority of agents do not use it, but you can use it for internal purposes as well. Next mandatory item that I would utilize here would be the package type. We have to follow SARS drop-down lists. So the package type in combination like BX would be uh, box. Um, and then PK will be the package. So customs do correlate the package type and the package code to the selection list. That's why we have a drop down list with very specific items you can choose from, at the, as that'll pull through to your clearance file as well. Delivery terms is your INCO terms, whether it's FOB, I uh, believe um, most items would be, or most commonly, if you don't know who's responsible for the shipment, then you'd probably be choosing your X works in good terms. Categories, if you'd like to specify a type of category like furniture or uh, tobacco being cigars or cigarettes, what type of category it is. And if you start adding categories into the system, when you start adding the next item, then you'd take note that whilst you're adding categories into the system by manually typing it, the next time you run through the category list, you'd be able to just choose it from the selection list as to what you have typed into the system. 
Next is the tracking reference number. So I'm just going to put TRK001 so I can show you where that pulls through to the own clearance scenario. We also have further notes so you can put in your shipment notes, description, further marks and numbers, uh, marks and numbers, and endorsements. Spelling is atrocious today. Marks and numbers, then endorsements. So I'm just going to specify that information there and uh, test description and then any shipment notes as well. The reason why I'm doing this is it's not mandatory for you to insert this information, but I can at least show you how this pulls over to the clearance file as well. So the first item that I'm doing is I'm pressing save on my handover shipment, and then I'm going to be pressing the plus button to add my next own clearance item. At this point, you can see I've also saved the first HBL. Now there's two additional buttons that have come up because I've saved my first house uh, bill of lading number. There's a containers button where we can specify this house bill of lading is linked to that container. And then overall, there's a freight statement. Now I'll get to the freight statement in a moment and the containers button. I just want to add the own clearance file as well. So I'll press the plus button over here. Specify the own clearance, this will also be prepaid, HBL002, house, the file number, HBL2002, the supplier, I'm selecting one that is in the system. Please do note that the supplier must be registered in the system for you to select it, or obviously per the previous one you can add it. And then I'm just going to arrange my importer as well. There's no handover agent for an own clearance. Own clearance means I'm doing the bill of entry to customs. No notify party, debtor, discharge ports, saying hi as well. And then this one's going to be off the Durban. Oh, so my internet caused a little bit of a delay there. If your internet slows down, you'll see a little bit more of a spin. But if it spins for way too long, I generally just press the F5 on my keyboard or refresh just to try and reload the page or close the browser, reopen it, because then it just wouldn't have the second house line that I've saved. But there's no problem with doing that. I mean, I'll even show you right now at this point, if I don't save the information, close the browser straight away, reopen it, you'll see the information that I did have saved will still be there. But the new information that I was typing out will not. So yeah, if you do close your browser, then you can see what the results are going to be. So I've only got my house bill number one, but not the secondary house one that I was adding because save was not pressed. All right, so handover shipments, HBL002, HBL2002, who's going to be the supplier? Your imports and name. I just put in I double L, so there's only one record with I double in the system, so it completed the rest of the name for me. Uh, who's going to be the debtor? Then we reload the port of discharge. Oh, sorry, exactly that, Shanghai. And then the delivery. Number of pieces on this one will be five, gross weight is 50, and volumetric would be 16. Unpack depot, I'm just going to make it the same as 08. And then oh, made it 07 and 08. Now, every time I press tab on these fields, whenever I change the name, you'll notice the mouse cursor keeps jumping back to the field. Why is this? That's because the screen is doing a fetch to match 08 matches which container depot, and then that container depot name just returns back. That's why your mouse cursor would jump back into the field. So please take note of that. Next, for the invoice number, invoice dates, you see our number with most likely a UCR number might be mandatory for China shipments or all export shipments as well. Um, so if you don't know what the UCR number is, please make certain your overseas agent does send that to you as you would need to use the same UCR number. If there's a submaster, what is the subhouse belating number on the submaster? If there's an expiry date, location of goods. So if you just bring it to a depot and you control the depot um, as well, you can specify where in the depot is it? Which shelf is it loaded to? If you've got a free store warehouse, you can also specify over here where you're going to be offloading it to shelf A1, for instance, in the Boxburg um, free store warehousing, if you would like to utilize it that way as well for a little bit more control. 
and that can even feed furthermore into a barcoding system if you want to run full con full warehousing control or even interlink the EasyClear system into your um, warehouse management system as well. All right, furthermore, so I'm going to make this one a uh, box as well. So we know it's uh, a container, but what's in the container is what I normally specify. The delivery terms, I'm going to make this one X works as well. Category, I just put in uh, C, I can see what the categories are or search for the categories uh, based on general tobacco. So if I had to put in T there, it doesn't result in tobacco, you've still got to select it. The reason being is because it allows you to add additional uh, categories if you are wanting more categories in the system, only if you utilize that box for internal purposes. I'm going to utilize this as the tracking 002 number. Uh, shipment notes two. Description test two. Marks two and endorsements two as well. The reason why I'm doing this is just show you when we do the own clearance where that information pulls through. You can leave a blank and do it on your clearance file if you want to, because uh, as I showed you, if you just insert the top information, press save, the house bill lading number two will automatically have been saved. Now for house bill lading number one, I'm going to utilize the containers button. I can either import a CSV container. So if you would like to know the format to import it from Excel, just reach out to us. We can show you what the functionality there is and just keep the template the same in order to import it successfully. All right, so over here, I'm going to press the plus button straight away and then specify what is the container type. Your 20 foot, what is the container number? So this one, I'm just going to say MAEU1345675. If there's a seal number, is it a mechanical or electronic seal number? What's the gross weight of container number one? And then what would be the depot code? Is there a cargo status? So this will be an LCL type shipment or container number one, and then secondary container number two. If they are both packed into the same container, then obviously you're only capturing one container. All right, so then we can scroll down. If you would like to, you can use depot code two. So obviously this went from 07 to 08, and it would still be an LCL type shipment. Is there a UN number, a digi class? Is there a packing group? Um, as well as it is refrigerated as well. If it is hazardous goods and is marked off as dangerous goods on the container, please tick the box for hazardous as well. Furthermore to that, we do have additional details, which are not mandatory, but it's always good to at least populate the dimensions for what, um, how many packages within the container, what is the weight, then the volume, and the difference between the two, what is the chargeable weight, for instance. So you might capture the packaging as the pallets is contained on, but the package itself might only weigh 45. So what is the chargeable per the movement, and is the Palettes inclusive to the chargeable weight or not. And you can specify furthermore to that is this one's loaded in a box, hence why my weights and chargeable weights are generally the same. Is there a description and further marks to that? And if you'd like to utilize uh, free store, then you can actually specify like Q67 references as well, uh, just to grab and insert more information into the system if needs be. From there, I can press the save button and I've captured my container number one. Now you'll see EasyClear does have a validation on the container number that at least the first four characters are alphanumeric and then the total length of the container must be 11 characters long. So that's what you'll get from your massable lading document. I'm just going to ignore this as an invalid container number and press the save button. Then I do also realize here that oh there is a secondary container for my shipment but the details don't really um, differ too much except for one or two numbers so i can press the add button adding my secondary container but i do also like the copy container function which only appears when a container does exist i can select the container i'm copying and press the copy function now i already have two containers in the system where i can just go ahead and change the 
information that I need to based on the secondary container and press save. So you'll see my container's number is not valid, so I'm just pressing the save button again after I press ignore. I'll just close this pop-up and then you'll see even if I select HBL line number two and press the containers button, both my containers are still referenced here. So it doesn't matter where you're selecting container uh, house line one or con house line two, the containers button is for the entire shipment. Then for those of you who are curious, we do have the milestones button here. So if you want to press the milestones for internal tracking purposes and go ahead and print uh, any tracking reports where your users are uploading information into the system, like say for instance, we wouldn't know if when you received your ANF on email or if you received your ocean bill of lading uh, on email as well. So EasyClear wouldn't know that, so we would actually ask you to insert that information as well as the clearing instruction and yeah there's quite a lot of tracking information in here if you find there's a field that you need but it's not available please reach out to us as we can always add it to the system and make it available for everybody without needing to bill you um, purely because it would be a beneficial item for everybody inclusively so once you fill out your tracking information you can press the save option and then that'll be your tracking information for your forwarding file. Now, furthermore to this, um, before I raise a own clearance file, and just to show you how, the freight statement button. The freight statement button is very similar to our invoicing screen. This allows you to specify what are the charge codes. So per your financial system, if there's a specific charge code for X works or air freight, ocean freight or road freight, then you can use the freight statement button for that. And most commonly, I'd utilize the forwarding screen for my ocean freight or my air freight, inclusive with the XWorks charge. That information can be inserted here. And then if you provide us with the logic, then we can also print that information on the invoice raised that is linked to the forwarding file. So it won't pull through the charges to your invoice calculations, but it can pull the freight and the XWorks charge as a uh, as a show scenario on your invoice so that we can display it anywhere on the invoicing screen where you see fits and that will be business guided. So if you guide us as to what is the logic you would like to use that for, then we can change the invoice template to always print that information across. So over here, I'm going to change specify my first one is my freight charge. Now that'll Probably you come from my financial system as 004 is my post in charge code that my financial system understands. The description, I can change the description from freight charge to whatever I like over there. What is the currency? So this one came through as USD where my X works is zero. So you can have multiple rates of exchange. Uh, based on the currency, what is the rate that you've been provided? Uh, you can use the divide rate or the multiply rate as well depending on how you utilize the forwarding system as well. So this one, I'm going to specify the divide rate at 0 0.00852. I don't know the actual rates of exchange, so I'm just utilizing digits off the top of my head. The foreign amount is 100, so the random amount will be there. And I can see that this is not the divide, it's more the multiplier rates. So there we go. 100 will revert to times by 15 rand to the dollar, give or take which will give me my RAND amount. And if there's VAT inclusive, there's no VAT symbols on here, so you can just press save there, and it will show you your first line for the freight. The next line item, I want to choose my XWorks. Uh, let's just go control F for XWorks. I see there's no charge for XWorks. So if there isn't one, we can always add it to the system. Please make certain that corresponds with your financial system as well. I'm just going to specify a random charge code here just for show and tell and just mark it off as my x works this one i'll make it as a euro charge and my euro charge will be 18 for instance and that'll be an x works of 50 euros 50 times 18 will give me my 900. i'll press the save button there and there we go i've got my freight and my x works as i say we've got two house lines over here if i was registering an a clearance file or invoicing the hand of a uh, invoice directly, then I can utilize some logic to specify 
oh, maybe I want the X works to proportion itself per invoice divided by either my volumetric weight or my chargeable mass, or I just want the total to pull through directly. Either which way you would like to reference that on your final invoice that prints out, if you would like this information to pull through, then just let us know what that logic is, and we can build it into the invoicing screen as per your recommendation. All right. So once I've captured those two, I can click back on the house detail. And then I can see all my information is now done. My forwarding file is complete. And the very last thing I'm just going to utilize is the print button. Now you'll notice I haven't repressed the save button because the last item I was working on was the invoicing side. So I've saved those two lines. All my previous work was saved. There's no reason for me to press the save button again. But if you're uncertain if it's saved or not, by default, you can press save if you like. The print option here, for any type of documents that you would like us to add into the system, like your master bill of lading that you need to print from the forwarding screen or an ANF type document, uh, delivery release order, or any type of documentation that prints out uh, all the house details, inclusive of, say for instance, an airline manifest or a sea freight manifest as well, we can design and attach those documents here. The documents that I have mentioned, we do have default generic documents that we can provide to you. And then you can print the documents and within pen or um, Photoshop or paint, you can specify what changes you would like to the documentation. And as long as the information exists in EasyClear, we can add it to the document itself. If you'd like it to print out in Excel, please take note that it will go through our development department and depending on the requirements, might be a billable situation. All right, so from here I can see what my disbursement info, uh, charge code report, and I can also print out my DRO, my delivery release order as well. So for any items that have this, I can see the house rec ID is zero here, because if I'm printing a document that specifically requires me to select a house line before I print it, you'll notice that the house rec ID being zero is not going to be a good thing. So rather close that, select the house bill you want to print, and then try your prints again to make certain that that doesn't say zero. If it does, you know that you're going to get an error on the document that prints out because you've got to specify the house you are printing. But say, for instance, like an airline manifest, that doesn't matter. You can just open it and print it directly because it's going to print all the house lines regardless. The DRO is very specific to print the house line in question. For additional information, such as EasyClear on these type of documents can add free format text boxes that allow you the opportunity to put in like a cargo dues number. So I'm going to type number 001 hash, for instance. Any further remarks or comments, bill of entry numbers for handover shipments. And then press the print button. Once I've done the print button, I can see my DRO has been added. As I said before, if you'd like any other additional free format text boxes to actually pull through, then we can also insert that information accordingly. I see the template that's been added to the test environment is not picking up the information on top. I believe that's just a slight issue with the template, but we do note that this template here works with other companies, so I can just realign the template and print out all the information accordingly. Ready. If you do go ahead and print the template, as you can see the free format information that I inserted down below, NO001 for instance, target use date, bill of entry date, and bill of entry number, inclusive with the unpacked depot, that information all prints through accordingly. I can go to a live environment and show you another example uh, giving you this information as well. So any documentation that you do require, Please take notes to reprint the secondary house line. I would have to select it and then choose the same thing in order to print. And you'll note that the rec ID is slightly different, but your cargo dues note does remain because of the master file number. All right. Once I'm done with my printer, so I can just close that and then proceed with my own clearance. If I would like to submit the RCG file at this point, I can press new cargo reporting file. This will be for another session. I just want to show you what happens, that I can specify I'm doing my LH, 
put in my transport document number, press the build button, and it'll pull through all that information accordingly. All right. Cool, that'll be for another session, but then going back to the forwarding file. Next, we want to take the handover shipment. We'll invoice that accordingly on the invoicing section as well. But just for show and tell on the HBL002, if you have a house bill number and you want to link it to a clearance file, I can use the home button, go to clearance, import bill of entry, or whilst on the forwarding screen, I can also hit the drop down menu on top and click on import bill of entry as well. That'll take you to the same screen here where I can add, copy a file, add own clearance is what we're looking for, add to console, giving you 10 shipments with the same file number, A, B, C, and D. From clearing a uh, client's instruction from the client's order management screen, or from a master file as well. So I'm going to run with forwarding links to clearance using the add own clearance. There's no add own clearance for the export module. So please take note of that. That's add own clearance will purely and only solely work for your imports module. But right, once I click on add own clearance, um, you can either search by the forwarding file number with multi parts where you want to raise each clearance file for the 10 uh, own clearance house lines that you have on the forwarding file. Or alternatively, we are doing one house bill number that's pulling through. So I'm going to press the house bill search and my house bill number was HBL001. So you'll note the file number I made was HBL1001, but you do only search by the house bill number. I see this one here, I've made two files with exactly the same house bill number. Which one is the selection? The house file number, uh, uh, right, HBL002 is the one I made, sorry. Because 001 was the own uh, handover shipment, where 002 was the only scenario for my own clearance. So there I can see HBL002, but my file number HBL2002 allowed me that unique reference to identify that that is the correct one I'm selecting in order to pull it through. And then you'll see the rest of the information has pulled through. It even shows you what forwarding file has number has linked to this and the type of packages. Then if I try and press save immediately, it will just show you, we just want to determine that the forwarding file number you have pulled through is accurate. So please just pull out those mandatory information items as well before you can save the file. Once you're done with that, I'm just going to populate the mandatory information here, transfer mode one, uh, GT type, so I'll specify this, this is the standard DP entry. On retrust mode, well, it's coming to South Africa, not leaving the country, so I don't need to use that one. Agent file numbers, automatic in most people's scenarios. There's my importer, supplier, if I press save now, I can see what the rest of the um, mandatory fields are. Duplicate master number and file number. I'm going to ignore the duplicate master number. I don't know what that password is, so let me utilize my administrative privileges. Also, oh, I just missed one character on my password. There we go. So the master number is ignored, and then the duplicate house number I'm just going to ignore as well, and then try to press the save button again. When I press the save button, I see agent file number is mandatory. So there's no automatic file numbering set up in our test environment for the C freight DP type entry. I'm just going to mark this off as test 7001 and save. Cool. Because I already bypassed the duplicate master and house number, the program remembers I've bypassed it. But if I went back a screen and came back, it would still uh, it would refresh and say, please. Uh, bypass those duplicate fields again. But then you can see this file is now saved. I've got a paper clip where I can add further attachments. The containers have both pulled through automatically, as well as my marks and numbers and endorsements. Cool. And then if I scroll further down, I can also see that my encode terms have also pulled through. My freight type being prepaid has also pulled through. Um, container package types, as well as most of the master information. 
Now at this point, you see most of the master information is pulled through, but to get this file successful with customs, I've still got to specify who's going to be the vessel agent. Now for MSC, they are their own vessel agent, so I actually can bypass that. But for Evergreen, you'd obviously insert what their vessel agent is, and that would be the building on South African soil. If there was a submaster, place of issue, this is coming from Shanghai. So it doesn't know, because there's two results, uh, it's the first thing that came up and asked me, which Shanghai are you selecting? So I can tab through there. Please take note, do not insert this information manually. Port of discharge is going to be Durban. I'm just making certain the selection is correct by taking out the last character. Country of destination, I can put in South Africa, but I can also put in ZA because if I tab past South Africa, it resolves to ZA anyway. Customs entry place is going to be DBN. Now, this is the only place where you would type in the ISO code. Inclusive with the ports of exit, I'm going to keep it as DBN as well. Main reason is it's coming in via DBN and staying in the country, so DBN, there's no port of exit. Um, if there is an on retrans mode, then that would be port of exit that like, comes in via Durban, leaves via air freight on JSA or DF Milan or road freight by bike bridge as well. Is there a description? So I can say test description. And then what will pay be the payment code being between D for deferment, C for cash, or F for free. I've finalized all the rest of the information based from the forwarding file, own clearance into the clearance file and save. And then I can complete my clearance file into customs, which will be it for a different session. But if I want to go back to the forwarding file, I can always click on this link over here and that'll take me back to the forwarding file. So it's a quick link between the two. If I scroll down to the house line, I can also see, oh, this is linked to a clearance file. Click on the link over here and that will take me to the clearance file as well. Plus on automatically on the milestones, I've also got my ATD. Everybody, apologies on that. So I generated a little, little um, hiccup there. <laughs> but at least, as you can see, this doesn't affect the EasyClear web environment. As when as I've taken everybody through the links, the forwarding file, how to capture an own clearance versus a handover. The last comment that I haven't mentioned is the indent numbers. So based on the indent numbers, for those of you who would like to use an indent system, uh, that there is a finite setup to make certain that it's working perfectly for your business. So if you understand indents and you want to raise indents versus the estimates, forwarding versus your actual invoice, to make certain your estimates versus your uh, billing section is actually tying up, so you estimate you're quoting more or less what you're billing, then you can use the indent system to correlate the two. All right, so it's just a short description on the indents where you can just press the plus button, um, 001, press the plus button, and link your estimate number to your forwarding file as well. All right, so once that's all done, um, if there's any other documents you want added to the system, you can print it. And at this point, because I've linked a clearance file to the forwarding file, if I had to try and delete this forwarding file in question here, it will not be able to because a clearing file already exists. If I delete the clearing file, then I can delete the forwarding file. If you've raised a invoice against your house file number, the same thing will occur. An invoice exists on the house file. You cannot delete the forwarding file unless you delete the invoice. If the invoice is already closed, there is no possible way to delete either or. Alrighty. So just to show you that commentary over there, I'll go to the clearance file, delete this clearance file in question. It does ask you, please confirm you want to delete before the system allows you. So if you find the files deleted and you specify from your business end, it wasn't anybody from your side, we do have the two step verification, confirming you want to delete the file. And we also have the activity log under maintenance confirming who deleted the file as well. All right, then we can go back to the forwarding file, press search on the forwarding file. The clearance file is no longer linked to the forwarding file, so I should be able to now delete the forwarding file in question, and it is gone. Alrighty, I've got...